Hey everybody, so today we're going to be trying a project that could turn out awesome or it could be a total flop. But anyway, we hope that this video will help you decide if it's the right project for you to take on. Anyway, so a couple videos ago we actually showed that we changed out our lower kitchen cabinets with reclaimed wood. And in that video we mentioned that uh, we just weren't too sure about how the countertops went with it. Well, over time, uh, Katie decided that um, she definitely wanted to change it up, but we wanted to change up our existing countertops versus completely recreating them. Now, me personally, I think it looks pretty good with the countertops the way they are, but once Katie gets an idea in her head, we're going to move forward with it. So anyway, we're actually going to head over to Rockler today and we're going to get some stain. Uh, we're actually going to end up having to sand down the countertops and we're going to be staining it with a black stain. Now, that's going to bring in a darker color, but it's still going to leave the grain in the wood so you're going to be able to tell that it is wood so we're really excited about it really excited to see how it turns out and hopefully it's good but anyway we're going to head over to rockler and pick up the supplies we need So we're back from Rockler where we picked up our General Finishes black wood stain as well as our General Finishes flat uh, top coat. So this is what we're going to be adding to our kitchen countertops. But before we do that, we actually have to remove the stovetop or at least the top section of our stovetop and then tape off around the sink and around the backsplash so that we can go ahead and sand this down to its original finish. But anyway, let's get started with that. So here we are, our stain is applied and ready for its top coat. Now one thing I want to mention here before we get into all that is that once our last layer of stain was applied, we let it dry and then we took a finishing sandpaper, sanded it down, grabbed the vacuum, vacuumed up whatever we could, then grabbed a damp cloth and wiped it down to pick up any extra lint or dust particles that may still be on the top. And now at this point we've let that dry and it's ready for the top coat. Now, there are uh, a couple mistakes that Katie and I made that we hope you can avoid if you're going to be trying this in your own RV. And that's mainly what we mentioned in the beginning of the video about taping off our backsplash trim and our RV kitchen sink. Now, the problem with that is we taped it all off, but then we quickly realized that some of the clear caulking we used came out a little further than you could actually see. So once we applied our first couple coats of stain, we realized that it's not actually staining the wood all the way around the sink or all the way by the trim. So generally it'll take about two to three coats of stain to get the job finished, but since we eventually had to remove the sink and the trim, we ended up having to do a little extra sanding in those areas and then adding some more coats. So I think we finished up at about four or five coats, which added a lot of extra work. So if you're gonna be trying this in your RV, we would recommend removing the sink, removing any trim you have so that you can do uh, your stain fully across the entire surface without having to go through the extra step. So anyway, our countertop's ready to go, um, and then we realized one other thing, and that's that our RV kitchen faucet started leaking again. And it's been a problem we've kind of uh, dealt with since we added that faucet in here, but since we had everything out, we're like, you know what, it's time to get rid of it. So if you want to see how we removed our RV kitchen faucet and how we replaced it with a new one, we are going to be coming out with a video here real soon that you can check out. But that's out, so now we're ready to go with the top coat. 
And what I have back here is actually my mixture. So as I mentioned earlier, we did use a General Finishes flat top coat. And it's recommended sometimes that you take that and dilute it with water. So what we did is poured our finish in here and mixed it with about 20% water. Um, and I have my stir stick here because as we're going through the process, I'm going to want to just continually mix this up to make sure that it's getting applicated smoothly across our surface. Now, over here, I actually have a paint pad, which is one way it's recommended to add the top coat. But we quickly realized that we didn't have the applicator it, apply, it attaches to. So we're not going to be using this. And instead, we're going to be using another recommended method, which is actually a foam brush. So anyway, that about wraps it up. Our stain's ready to go. Our top coat's ready. So we're going to go ahead and apply this on here and show you how we do it. So here we are in our RV kitchen countertops are all finished up. We've got our sink reinstalled, our oven back in place, our back trim on, our countertop extension ready to go, and our new faucet, faucet installed. Now if you're interested in seeing how we removed the old faucet and replaced it with a new one, we are going to be coming out with a video here real soon that goes through that entire process, so make sure to check that out. But to be completely honest with you, um, after we sealed the countertops and took a step back, gave it some time to completely dry, we realized that they were kind of looking uh, caked on and a little thick. And I think that's because uh, in the beginning when we tried to uh, cut some corners by leaving the sink in and the trim and taping it off, um, and then eventually having to remove them so that we could go over it, we ended up adding too many coats of the stain. And then on top of that, our first time putting the sealer on, uh, I think we used too much and it was a little too thick. So what we ended up doing is actually ripping out the sink, taking off the stove, removing the trim, and basically starting from scratch, sanding everything down uh, so that we could start all over. Now we still use the same processes that we showed earlier in the video, we just used it without these things installed. And that moves us along to the tips that we want to share with you guys that we learned through this process. And number one is prep. So we know that you shouldn't cut corners. We know that you shouldn't try to make things happen quicker than they should. But yet we still took that approach. So if you learn anything from this video, it's just take the time to prep accordingly. So in our case, we should have from the very beginning removed the trim, removed the sink, removed the faucet, removed the stove, and just got it done. But instead, we tried doing it with the sink in and the trim on and the oven in. Anyway, it was a disaster. But now that we've decided to do it the right way, it looks really good and we're really satisfied with it. Now tip number two is that we found some Scott's rag paper towels and these things worked awesome, especially with the stain. Once we were applying it and we came back through with those rags, it really did a great job of not leaving any lint or hair and also removing any crazy access stain that we had on the countertops. And number three is when we were applying the sealer, we didn't have the right piece to use the pad. So if you have a pad, you may want to try that. That might be better. However, if you don't, what we did is we used two two-inch foam brushes. And what we would do is take the stain on one, go ahead and apply it evenly across the section we were attaching it to. And then we would take the second foam brush that was dry and come across and just flatten and smooth out the sealer. This made it a lot better as far as getting the sealer on even, evenly and helping it dry with that more finished look. And then it's also important to always read the instructions on your stain or sealer. They're all going to be different and it can depend on if it's water-based or oil-based or a variety of different re uh, reasons. Just make sure to look at the label and apply your solution the right way. 
But overall, that pretty much wraps it up for our RV kitchen countertops. We're really happy with the way they turned out. Um, you may have seen one of our recent videos that came out where we talked about how great they were holding up before we stained them. And we wanted to share that video because we really were happy with our countertops before and the way they were. And we thought that they looked really great when all our lower cabinets were, were black because it made the countertops the focal point. Well, once we changed the lower cabinets to the reclaimed wood, we really wanted them to be the focal point. And now that we've had to have our new countertops finished with the black stain, we really think that our lower reclaimed cabinets pop. So anyway, if you guys have any questions or comments uh, about how we did this, definitely feel free to let us know. We'd love to hear about them and uh, help in any way that we can. But thank you guys so much for swinging by today. Don't forget to shoot over to the website. Uh, check out the post we're going to put together for this. Um, as soon as that's up and available, we will put a link in the description box for you to check out. Uh, but other than that, that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for swinging by today, and we'll see you guys again soon.